I'd like to say a warm welcome to everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your undoubtedly busy schedule to join us this afternoon. Uh, Pia and, and I have been looking very much forward to uh, telling you some uh, exciting research in, uh, insights from the Half Double Institute. That is the agenda for today. Um, before I say a little bit more about the Half Double Institute, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Christina Sire Pearson. I'm the executive director of the Half Double Institute. I've been so for around six months, but I'm also one of the founding mothers of the Half Double methodology that Pia and I have been working on for, well, going on 10 years, I guess. So, Pia, uh, welcome and thank you for taking the time today. Yeah. Yes. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit to the yes, audience? Yes, yes, I would. Uh, I'm Piers Meinwig and uh, I'm from Aarhus University. As uh, Christina said, I've been involved in half double research for eight, ten years. So now today we want to consolidate all these findings and show where are we right now. And I'm really excited to present all the good results we have to present for you. Sounds good. Mm. I'm looking forward to it very much. Now, the Half Double Institute was founded around uh, two years ago, but we have worked on the Half Double methodology, a new project management methodology for about 10 years. The vision of um, Half Double, I'm just trying to change here. The vision is to increase the success rates of projects. And uh, we hope that by uh, increasing the success rate of projects, we will also increase the competitiveness of private and public organizations, first in Denmark and then hopefully in the rest of the world. Um, the companies and organizations are becoming increasingly project oriented. I think I saw a number that, that almost 30% of any value in the world is created through projects. And um, we actually haven't had a huge success when it comes to project execution. Um, I think the common knowledge is that upwards of 30 to 35 percent uh, of projects are successful, which is not really a lot given uh, the industry who's now been around for what, 40, 50 years, maybe 60, yeah. maybe, 60 yeah. years. Yes. Um, and uh, we set out to do better. And uh, we founded the Institute and we founded the half double methodology. Uh, the Institute is an independent Institute. We're a nonprofit. Our only goal is to make projects better and thereby companies and organizations better. We're made in Denmark, we're invented in Denmark. And we have uh, through the last eight years been supported by the Danish Industry Foundation. This webinar is not specifically about the content of the model, but I would uh, not miss an opportunity just to show uh, the model. And, and I think we say there are three things that stand out for this model. It's simple. We have the half double wheel here, and that is basically the model. Of course, there's lots of things under it, but this is uh, basically the tools that we recommend that you use. It's adaptable. We have a large element of local translation. Mm -hmm. And we also do not claim exclusivity. We say that the half double methodology can be used together with others, either as a booster, a supplement, something that you can use in one part of the organization and maybe use other models in other parts of the organization. And it's a hybrid model. It's a hybrid model that we believe take the best from sort of classic project management and the uh, agile project management, putting it together in a uh, model that we believe that uh, will create uh, success. Now, as part of this journey, we have uh, worked with you, Pia, for many years to make sure that we had an independent scientist looking at the model, look at the companies that use the model to figure out whether we actually succeeded in creating a project model that will give us a higher success rate. Nothing is perfect, but just higher than what we saw. And uh, I think we can hear a lot about those results today. So I'm very, very happy to pass the word on to you, Pia, and to tell us a little bit about what you have found in these eight years that you have been with us. So yes. the stage is yours. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Christina. First of all, it's not only me who has been working on it. We have been a team of researchers doing it. So, so just to clarify that, yes. uh, I've been responsible for the research, but I've had a lot of support, as you can see. Yes. But uh, we have just released a research report in June this year, 
And many of the results I'll present today are based on this report. I'll try to answer the following questions. Are the half double projects synonymous with success? I'll try to go into depth of that. Does half double methodology genuinely make a difference? Is there any difference between other projects and half double projects? And then also in which context and what are the characteristics of the, the projects that uh, have been using half double uh, methodology? And then something about small and medium sized enterprise. There's a lot of countries, including Denmark, who has a lot of uh, 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 what could you say, uh, small and medium yes. uh, sized enterprise, yes. which is important to tell about. Yes. And finally, where can you read more? Yes. Because this is a very short webinar and uh, you obviously need to read more if you want to understand all the details. Mm -hmm. But let me start a little bit about telling you what kind of data have we collected in the project. And as uh, Christina already has told you, we've been working with research part uh, more than eight years since 2015 until this year, and we continue to work yes. with research. And I'll try to explain a bit that we have been doing a lot of what we call in-depth studies. What do we mean by in-depth studies? We mean that it's not just an interview, it's not just a survey. It could be up to 15 interactions with different organizations where we interview, have workshop, collect KPI data, review meetings, etc. That's what we mean by in-depth studies. We also call it mixed methods because we're combining qualitative data and quantitative data. Now I'll tell a little bit more the, about the numbers. First of all, we have been researching 28 half-double projects. And what do we mean by half-double projects? We mean projects which has been using the half-double methodology. But then we have also been working with what we call reference project. And here we have 88 reference projects. And the way we have done this research is that we have had one half-double project in an organization and typically three reference projects in an organization. So we can compare whether the half-double projects perform better or worse than the reference projects. That's the idea. That's the reason why you can see 28 half-double projects on the slide and 88 reference projects. We've been doing this in 23 different organizations. And out of these 23 organizations, we have nine SMEs. I have to tell you that we have data from more SMEs, but the data I will talk about today is mainly based on the figures you can see here. Mm -hmm. Then beyond these in-depth studies, we've been doing four survey uh, studies as well, where we do traditional surveys, send out and people respond to the surveys. And that, this has been done from 2020 to 23. And I will show you some data from all these different parts of our data collection. But before that, Christina has already talked about what is the vision of the Half Double Institute. But I will bring you back and tell you a bit about what was the objective with the Half Double methodology, because that's what we have been doing research upon, trying to find out to what degree does the project fulfill this objective. And the objective is to have a project methodology that can increase the success rate of projects while increasing the development speed of new products and services. So we need this acceleration element as mm -hmm. well. Then uh, before moving into the research results itself, I always has this disclaimer. And I have to say every time we do research, there are always limitations and uncertainties. I don't have time today to go through the uh, limitations and the uncertainties, but uh, I can uh, tell you that if you read our latest report and all the other reports we have published, you can read exactly what are the limitations and uncertainties. But I don't have time to go into that. I just want to say that so you understand there are different subjective evaluations in all kinds of research. Now, the first slide with the research 
resolve. And before you delve into that, yeah. I think I forgot uh, in the beginning to invite questions. So, of course, as a webinar, you cannot speak, but we do have an open chat, and we would encourage everybody who's listening, if you have questions, uh, first and foremost to Pierre, but also to me, please put them in the chat, and we have somebody watching, and uh, we will take your uh, questions. So, um, yeah, please uh, continue, Pierre. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, so you have a chance to ask me and, and Christina questions as well. But now back to the research results. Yes. First of all, we have this question. Are half double projects synonymous with success? That's quite important, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes. You have Very to say it. Yeah, yeah. The first uh, pie diagram is absolute success rate. The way we measure absolute success rate is that we define typically 10 to 15 key performance indicators at the beginning of the project, and then we measure these KPIs after the project is completed. Some of these KPIs could first be measured maybe one, two, even three years after the project is launched, because that's the nature of key performance indicators. Here we can see that 70, around 75% has a high degree of absolute success rate, which means that nearly all KPIs has been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So I think that's quite good, I have to say, also compared with other studies, which I will show in, in, in short time. Then we also measure relative speed. And what do we mean by relative speed? Now I go back to the situation where I said we had one half double project compared with three reference projects. And uh, in order to measure relative speed, we compare the half-double project in a given organization with a two reference project. And here we can see that we were able to speed up around 50% of the projects. It's not all projects you can do it, and there no. could be many, many reasons for that. But we can also show you it is possible to do. We have different case studies which you can read and download, which explains in detail how did they achieve this uh, increase in speed. We also measured impact, effect, benefit, realization, whatever you call it. And here you can see we are, we are down to maybe below 40% where we were able to have higher impact compared to the reference projects. And I think that that's uh, the pattern you see. And I think uh, when you do real life projects, you will have pie diagrams as you see here. But I would like to uh, compare it a bit to other studies. And what you see here is I've taken the absolute success rate numbers and compared them with other studies. If we start with the success rate, I just told you that the half-double projects has 75%, around 75, 74 it says here, that's the exact number. Mm -hmm. If we look at similar PMI study, they say 65 to 72%, so that's in the same range. If we look at the CARE study, which you referred to early on, we're down to 31%. Mm -hmm. So what I can say here is half double project success rate is in the high end. Mm -hmm. So then if we look at failure rate, which is also quite important, and that's 7% uh, uh, failure rate for uh, half double projects, and it's up to 17 to 25% according to PMI and even 19% for chaos uh, uh, report. So both from a success perspective and from a failure perspective, we can see that half, half double projects perform quite well. Then you can start ask a lot about why, and I'll come back to some of the uh, qu questions to that, but that's a very deep question which could not easily be answered, but, but I will try to give you some clues today. Can I ask you a little bit about the PMI? It seems that they have the same success uh, numbers. Yeah. Uh, have they also done the uh, quantitative where they have done one study and then reference no, the projects? No, no, no. And that's maybe a difference between the, the studies you see here. Our study is based on in-depth case studies where we have measured objective KPIs. If we take both PMI and chaos, they are survey based. So they are, they are perceived success more than measured objective success. So mm -hmm. there's a big difference. And that's the reason why you always should be careful comparing these studies. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to compare with something which are available. So now, yes. you, now you have an example of that. Okay. Yeah. Then I also have another thing I want to show to you. And that's how is the use overall of half-double practices, the methods and the tools in half-double, 
consisting of the core elements, impact, flow and leadership, how do they relate to project success? And we have that from a large survey-based study where we have investigated that. And if you look at the uh, scatter plot, it's called a scatter plot with all the dots you see here. And you can also see a yellow line. That's the linear regression line mm -hmm. you see. And what we can see here is the more you use the half double practices, the higher success you'll get. And the relation between use of half double projects and the project success is around 32%, which means that if you increase a success by using half double, then it explains 32% of this uh, uh, success rate. Mm -hmm. This does also mean there are 68% which are not explained only by the methodology. And I think we all know that it's not enough to use a methodology. You also have to have experienced project managers. You have need to have uh, external circumstances which uh, fit to it. And there could be a lot of other explanations. But I have to say that in social science, 32% explanation is quite high. Mm -hmm. We have seen other studies which are down to 10%, where methodology only impacts 10%. So that's quite good, I would say. Now let's start to dig a little bit further into our research data and, and look at what about uh, how much are we using these practices divided into different core elements. Mm -hmm. This could be broken down to all the practices and this mm -hmm. is done in the report, mm -hmm. but I don't have time to do that uh, today. Mm. So uh, here uh, we ask the question, does the half double methodology genuinely make a difference? And we can see that all the half double projects are applying these practices or methods or tools, whatever you call it, to a higher degree than the reference projects. Here again, we take all the half double projects and compare them with all the reference projects. And if we start with the impact that I mentioned, impact is where you want to create effect in an organization or society, whatever you want to achieve. Here you can see that there's a big difference that you're using uh, the uh, uh, practices. I think it's around 58% of more than 50%. Uh, if we take the flow element, the flow element is comparable to agile thinking in some way, mm -hmm. but also beyond. Here we are down to around 40% more, which means that reference projects are also using these uh, practices, even if they're not claiming to use half double, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which makes sense because, for instance, a, a, a method like co-location could be used in all kinds of projects. So yes. that, that really makes sense, I would say. Mm -hmm. Then the last part is leadership. That's how you run the project, how you lead the project. Here's the difference lesser than for the two others, which means that it seems to be more common practice, both in half double projects and in the reference projects that you're using these leadership styles that we uh, say you should do in the half double methodology. But overall, I think you can see that there is a difference between half double projects and the reference projects. And I think that's the question. Does it really make a difference? And, and yes, it does. And here you can see how much. And of course, if I go back to the previous slide, you can see if we combine all these practices, it impact success. Then I would like to move a bit on mm -hmm. and talk about specific context and characteristics. Mm -hmm. Where is half double projects uh, able to work in a smooth way? Mm -hmm. And maybe start with something which is not directly written on the slide is that it could be used for many kinds of projects. It could be used for new product development projects, supply chain projects. It uh, can be used for uh, IT projects, but it's important to state that while a lot of agile methodology is to some way relating to IT projects, half double methodology is because it's a hybrid methodology also related to many other kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. And amongst these 28 projects that we have been investigating and researching, there's really a difference in what they are doing. And we can see it's possible to have success in many different ways. Uh, so 
I just want to say it works in a variety of projects and organizations. If you read our reports, if you read the case stories, you'll be able to see uh, how they work in different uh, contexts. And I also think it's possible to use them in other contexts than what we have been investigating. I can just not claim from a research point of view that they are working there. Mm -hmm. It's also both public and private organizations. Mm -hmm. That's also important to say. Mm -hmm. Then it the, uh, also says that it's implemented in small, medium and large organizations across sectors. And that's quite important. As I talked about earlier, in Denmark and in, in a lot of other countries, we have a large number of small and medium sized enterprises. So it is important to understand to what degree can half double methodology also be used in smaller organizations. And, and we can confirm that it could be used there. Then the half double projects vary in complexity, scale and size. And we have rather small projects and we have really large projects costing up to 650 million Danish kroner, which is even in, in Denmark or in, in, in a European context, a large project, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I think the main message here without going into depth, which sectors, which specific project types is that half double methodology works in many contexts and across many characteristics. And again, I would like to emphasize one thing that you said, uh, Christina, that is that half double methodology could be sort of as a kind of a booster together with other methodologies, for instance, Prince 2 or SAFE or whatever you're using. And that's maybe one of the reasons why it also could be used in many contexts, because it could be translated and, and merged with other uh, methodologies, which I would like to emphasize here. If I can ask you a question, I know that you've looked at it from a research point of view, and we do have research that shows that it works in many sizes, many industries, many types of projects. But if you remember back to the 28, would you say that there is a specific sweet spot or a project type where you say it has, you know, the greatest impact? I don't know if you think the science or the data would support such a claim. Yeah, I, I think I think I can say we we are not we we are, we are left to discussion about sweet spot because we can see it works in so many contexts. Yes. But I have to say, for instance, supply chain projects at least it works very well, and of course IT projects, which is not a surprise because that's the way IT projects has been run for many years, even yes. if it is a hybrid methodology. Yes. Then you can also say if it is very large engineering project, then you really have to consider how you use half double methodology. Yes. There's not a natural fit here. No. You have to consider how you use it. And that's maybe where you can say it's not the sweet spot. No. But, but that could be the way it has been implemented in these projects a long time ago. Uh, I think it's possible to use it but you have to take the learnings into account if you want to use it in very, very large engineering projects. So Thank that's the sweet spot and the non-sweet spot, yes. so to speak. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Then I have already touched it, but I, I think I want to uh, come up with uh, some additional information about uh, what, what about small and medium-sized enterprises, because we have, we have a natural focus on that. Uh, I also want to highlight what are the research results here. And we can see that the, the half double methodology practices also make a difference for small and medium sized enterprises. We have even more data than I have showed you there because we have collected uh, additional data in this area. For instance, we know that 134 SMEs has used the uh, half double methodology. We have not been evaluating in detail. We just know that they have been using it. So that shows that it is applicable for a small and medium sized. Then we have evaluated 10 half double projects in SMEs and in nine organizations. And the success rate is even higher in small and medium sized enterprise than it is in, uh, in large organization. That might not be a surprise because we know from other research that smaller organizations with smaller projects are able to succeed with the project because smaller projects are easier mm -hmm. and you always always have to think if you have a large project can you chunk it up in smaller projects mm -hmm. kind of modularity is yes. important to say so i think that to some extent also confirm this smaller projects are easy to get success with 
And even the failure rate is zero percent. That's probably. Uh, I like your numbers. Yeah, yeah, but but I think if it could be other numbers as well, okay. I, I have to, to to say I'm sorry, but that's the way. But you can see from these figures that the success rate is higher for SMEs than for large organizations or for the full populations, as you say. And do you think that is correlated with the fact that in smaller organizations or companies, you would naturally have smaller projects? Yeah, I think that's that's at least it's correlated, but probably not the only explanation because no. it's it still it still has to be they have to run the project in a good way. Still, yes. it's not enough to to just use the methodology yeah. and then you have success. Uh, you, I would never say that. No, you uh, can fail even in small projects. Yeah, for sure you can. For okay. sure you can. That's Interesting. No, yeah, for sure you can. Okay, now I've been through different parts of the uh, research report that we published in June. But uh, of course, there are a lot of details I haven't touched here. There are a lot of details also in other reports because we've been researching this for eight years and created a large research database and a large data set with a lot of information. But I just want to, uh, to tell you where can I read more, at least about what I've been talking about here. Where can I find the details about the context and characteristics? Where can I find the details about the practices, etc.? And this is the report that we have published uh, in June. This is available at the Half Double Institute webpage. Yes. So you can get it. I can also inform you can see on the left side of the slide that we have published different reports over the years with different results. Beyond this, we also have a lot of case studies we have been working with. And there's also some references, but that's for you to read. I won't read it. <laughs> And now I will give the word to you, uh, thank you. Christina, yes. after presenting the research yeah. results. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for that interesting uh, run through of the research. Um, we do have a question on the chat, and I think maybe it would be interesting that we both try to, uh, to answer. Um, Istvan is asking, uh, he has a very young project organization. So I know uh, he's asking, is there can we use start with half double or do you need to do something else before you jump into half double? And the reason why I find this uh, very interesting, mm. because I do remember our first meeting yeah, yeah. back in 2013, where we just, just discussed exactly this. Yeah. Is this something that you have to put on top or can you actually do half double and still be successful? I'd like yeah. very much to hear your answer to this question. Yeah, yeah. I think if I just should say yes or no, I would say no. But I would elaborate much more on that because no, the, no, no to you to just use half double method only in a young organization. I think if you're using uh, Agile and Scrum, for instance, or using half double method only, you need to know something about projects. You need to know what are the common practices you're doing. So it can not stand alone as I see it. It might be possible in some very specific situations. But I would say, if we talk about the project management body of knowledge, it's so big and half double is so small and it's easy to understand, it's easy to apply. But I have to say, in order to succeed, you, will be, you need to know more than that. And probably you'll need to know more about uh, classical project management. I had a, a, a friend who has been working with uh, projects for many, many years, and he said, and he had been working with Scrum, and he said, I was really glad that I had a classical project management understanding before starting to use Scrum, because I've never been able to run a real project just with Scrum. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, half double methodology is more than Scrum, I have to say, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it, it's not a standalone tool. You'll have to combine it with something. And that's the reason why we call it a booster as well. And, and if you want to accelerate your projects, then go for half double methodology and put it or merge it with your methodology, which you're using already and decide how can we combine these methods. There are even uh, reports on the website which state something about how can I combine, for instance, Prince 2 and, uh, and half double methodology or Scrum, mm -hmm. as far as I remember, safe, etc. Uh, so, so 
there are a lot about how you combine things. And I think real life project management is about tailoring and using the right methods to the right projects mm -hmm. in the right organizations and, and exactly trying to, to know where to use what. Mm -hmm. So that may be a very long uh, answer to you, Istvan, mm -hmm. but, but I hope that you understand a bit about that it's not easy just to say yes and no, and that's the problem with all researchers. They, they, ne they normally don't say yes and no, they yeah. always have a long explanation. I'm yes. sorry. No, it was a good answer. <laughs> and uh, the exciting thing is that I, I may have a little bit of a different answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, and I'm not impartial as I am the director <laughs> of the Institute, uh, and I'm here to promote the method. I agree with you that some experience in project management is a very, very good basis for applying the methods in half double. Mm. Uh, if you know a little bit about risk analysis, how to build up a milestone plan, yeah, exactly. those are useful. What I would say to Istvan, if you do yourself have some experience in project management, it doesn't have to be that your organization already have implemented another uh, methodology. No, no. But if you have some years, or if you start by taking a very basic project management uh, training course and then put the half double on, on top of it, I think actually with a very young organization, like that, I would have another caveat to Istvan is that it's very hard to implement half double just as a standalone single project. You need to have your organization willing to try this method because it does require a little bit different approach to management and to leadership also. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think some people might run into problems with half double as well mm -hmm. if they try to do it in just one project and the organization is not ready to embrace it. I don't know if yeah. you agree that could be. I, I agree fully with what you say, and I have to say say that most methodologies always have this situation that it's not enough to focus on a project. I normally say project is not an island. It's yes. always part of something in the organization, maybe across organizations. Yes. And because of that, you need the overall organization to understand what you're doing and to work in the connection with the project. Yes. Uh, there was a little question before. I don't see it on the chat right now, but uh, there were uh, one who was uh, wondering about ERP projects, small ERP uh, enterprise, um, you know, yeah, yeah. implementing systems. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that there are one of the organizations which has been working with ERP projects. I think it was SAP project, but that was uh, a large uh, organization. So, I don't think I have data of that, to be honest. So I would not try to, to say anything about that. I, f I don't think that half double not should be able to be used for smaller ERP projects because there are a lot of things. In fact, uh, before becoming a researcher, I've been working with ERP implementation mm -hmm. in industry. So from my industry knowledge, I would say you can, of course, use uh, have double methodology for uh, ERP projects in small organizations as well. As I what see about uh, large ERP implementations in larger organizations? Then you can use it as a booster, but you'll also need to use other kinds of uh, because, but that's typically follow these large ERP systems like SAP and Oracle, yes. etc. Because you have a lot of things you need to do, yes. how you roll them out and configure them. So, so they, if you use half double methodology in these large ERP or digital transformation projects, they could be called, you definitely need to combine half double methodology with other kinds of methodology. And once you do that, you might increase your chances of its success because I think we all know of many uh, failed IT implementation projects, right? That's right, that's right. And in fact, we talked about the chaos report earlier yeah. on where I combined, sorry, compared uh, numbers from different studies. The chaos report is exactly from IT and software. Yes. There's a question, do PMI and the Standish Group define success in a similar way? Are the numbers even comparable? You, you touch a real interesting point, and that's the problem. Every time you read the word success, mm -hmm then you always need to ask, how do we define success? And that's the reason why I spend a lot of time explaining how we define success in half double. And that's also how uh, it is explained in our reports, how we do it. And I can just say, they are not defining success in the same way. So that's the reason why you should be careful when you compare, compare success and failure rates. And that's also what I'm saying under the slides below, you can see that be careful when you yes. combine, uh, compare these things. Yes. 
We have a good question from Lars from Norway about yeah. local adaption is the key to half double. Does yeah. the research tell us anything about uh, which aspect of local adaptation that is the most crucial? The honest answer is no. I, 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 don't, I don't think that we have specific data because although we know that most organizations has done adaptation, it's, it's, it's what should I say, something which is difficult to define. What mm -hmm. did you then do different? Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's the same that even if you're saying you're working co-located, which is a rather uh, interesting thing, but then you can do co-location some days or some talks about co-location between sites where they have video camera. Is that translation or is that just using the uh, half top? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, I don't have an easy answer to that. No. You know, of course, it could be investigated in depth what kind of uh, tailoring or translation do you do, but then we should do that much more specifically than we've been doing here. Mm -hmm. There's a question, I think we touched a little bit on it. Do you have data evaluating the success of the half double methodology in organizations that have not formally worked with the project management methodology? So if you come into an organization, they may have experience in project management, but they haven't really chosen one model. Uh, yes, I uh, that have not formally worked with a project uh, methodology. I, I think that some of the organizations which have has been using half double methodology, especially in the smaller and medium sized enterprises, maybe are using a formalized project management methodology for the first time. Mm -hmm. But of course, even if you're not claiming that you're using something, you will always be doing some practices when yes. you're doing projects. And very often, people think that they are not re relying on any theoretical understanding. But when I look into it, I can find a lot of theories in people's mind when they're yeah. doing things. Yes. So probably they have some unknown methodology they've been using, but especially small and medium sized enterprises are working much more uh, without uh, using specific methodologies, yes. I would say, yes. And, and even when we say that, once they do a half double project, they actually seem to be quite successful in it. Yeah. So even if you don't have a formalized, formal, you, there's no reason why you couldn't try out no. half double. No. You don't have to go to somewhere else before you can try half double if you have project management experience. Yeah. Uh, the data would support that. There's a question again from Lars from House of Agile. Can you reflect around how Agile methods like lean and user-centric design is used in the most relevant manner within a half-double project? So now he's asking more to the specific tools within Flow. Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's a difficult because that's not something I have been investing uh, very much because the user-centric design uh, might come by running all the flow element which are in half double where you have sprint meetings where you have plan uh, retrospectives and present the minimum viable products get feedback from users etc but i also know that it could be done in many different ways because i've been working with it projects uh, with user designs so so of course half double support it to some degree but at a more generic level if you are doing some kind of uh, for instance it project or other kinds where you build prototypes and and things like that then you might use design thinking uh, design sprint whatever other kinds of thinking and again the good news is it could be combined with half double thinking because half double maybe gives the generic template for that. Mm -hmm. And then you might add some specific method for dialogue and, and, and user design. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, again, uh, I hope uh, this has, if nothing else, sparked your curiosity to learn more about Half Double. And uh, the Half Double Institute and PEER both are very, very social. So we would love <laughs> to hear from you. Uh, you mentioned our website. The Half Double Institute has a website where uh, all of your reports exactly, are yeah. publicly available. Yeah. And all of the case studies are actually also available where you can read about specific companies. What did they do? What type of project and what kind of 
success. Uh, there's also some videos mm -hmm. where some of the industry leaders in those companies are speaking about different elements and what it has done to their business. Also here uh, on, uh, uh, on the screen, you can see our emails. Uh, we'd love to hear from you any questions, challenges, uh, feel free to e email us. And if you are interested in learning more or getting training uh, in the half double, please go to our website and we will refer you to our accredited training organizations who can get you started on your half double journey. So, Pia, once again, thank you so much uh, for coming and telling you and thank you for contributing so many interesting things uh, through the eight years that we've been working together and we will continue yeah. to find interesting research about this methodology. I know that's something close to our, both of our hearts. Yes. I want to thank everybody uh, for listening. I want to wish you a very, very nice rest of your afternoon and uh, have a lovely evening. And uh, it is go goodbye from uh, Pia and myself. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for me also. It was a pleasure being together with you. Thank you.